For the last few weeks, I've been using this cheap and very small toaster oven um, as a reflow oven here in the shed. I wanted something small because, well, space is very limited here in the shed. So I've had to move to a different bench entirely. Well, I've had to set up a bench. Um, so that oven has been controlled via this relay um, and the Arduino here, this Arduino Uno uh, the 16 by 2 LCD screen and a uh, cheap thermocouple module um, using the Rocket Scream sketch. And uh, I have to say, I've done about 12 or 15 boards in this oven, and each one of them has worked very well. Uh, but there are some disadvantages to this approach. I took this approach because, well, I had all these bits here in the shed, the Uno and the relay and the screen. Uh, I think I had to buy the thermocouple. But yeah, I had all these bits here in the shed and I've been able to, uh, well, control a toaster oven without any adjustments to the actual oven itself. All of this is external. The plug here goes straight into the toaster oven so i've not had to do anything on the inside except for line the inside of this oven with tin foil uh, and i've now added it onto the side as well so the whole of the inside is lined in tin foil and uh, the door is as well so yeah but i would like to improve this the issue i've been having really is the fact that well these dupont cables become detached when I'm dragging this stuff out of its box to uh, reflow a board and that's no good really because the worst thing that could happen is one of these comes detached while the oven is well flowing and therefore potentially I guess it could go over temperature so yeah this temporary arrangement although has done me well for those 10 or well 15 boards that I have flowed well it needs to be improved i think now as you can see from this nine volt battery the space i've got in here to work with isn't very big it's certainly not very wide and i would have loved to have bought well the uh, unexpected makers reflow master or perhaps even the x toaster but both of them have quite a large screen and i didn't see how i was possibly going to get both those solutions or either of those solutions i should say into this space now having been so impressed with the uh, results of the rocket screen firmware on this arduino well it seemed sensible to buy well i guess this is their commercial product although it is open source and this is the tiny reflow controller and as you can see it really is very small it's based around this uh, is it 0.96 inch oled screen here so it's only as wide as that and i guess twice as high so it really is very small and pretty much all of those components here are encompassed into this one it's based around a um, atmel uh, 328p it's got a max 31655 um thermocouple chip in there couple of buttons um the only thing it doesn't have is the relay and compass because obviously you probably want that uh, remote anyway but yeah at the bottom there it has the thermocouple connections a connection for a solid state relay so no more clicking from the mechanical relay it also has connections for a fan there to cool down the oven at the end and uh, obviously a nice neat screen so yeah i'm going to try and put this inside there so here hopefully are all the components i'm going to need for this conversion i've got my solid state relay and this was an ebay cheapy uh, it switches the 240 volt on those top two contacts with a 3 to 32 volt dc uh, signal on these bottom two so that will connect to the SSR output on the tiny reflow controller uh, that controller will be powered by this it's a 240 to 5 volt uh, DC power supply that is adjustable it's 
quite big that it wasn't it was bigger than i imagined when i ordered it so we'll have to see if we can get that to fit in uh, and then i've got two push buttons here one to start and stop the oven and the other one to change the profile between leaded or lead free so the idea is that i'm going to put this square screen into a round hole so the 3d printer has been called into action and i've got these sort of shims and different designs here this is possibly the neatest one to go on the front of the tiny reflow controller and uh, yeah for that square screen to go in a round hole we'll see how successful that's going to be in a minute now with the screws out and the feet taken off this oven it does seem very small in here i think i can probably just about put the solid state relay down here and uh, the power supply for the tiny reflow controller in there i think it will just fit i need to be conscious of course that this surface here is well the oven wall and that's the element so i need to keep things away from those and also down here there are some holes that's where the screws come into the case uh, so i'll need to be sure to make sure that i'm not putting anything near those um the plan is then to take this temperature controller which is an interesting device in itself out and that does leave quite a bit of room behind here for the uh, tiny reflow controller so i'm just going to uh, see how i can make this work and then i'll i'll get back to you so i think i can make this work i've pulled a bit more cable into the oven th uh, by loosening off the grommet there uh, so i've got my live and neutral coming in uh, this was the live here going out to the timer and the uh, temperature module um, that will now be split using well a wago connector so those are you just shove them in and close them down they're pretty good they're rated for quite a few amps 10 amps at least i think the neutral well that'll connect to this white neutral here and of course i need to use those splitters uh, because i also need live and neutral for this as well so hopefully i think there's enough space in here so i'm just going to sort of crack on because it's quite difficult with the camera as it is to uh, show you every step i'm afraid so here we have the mains wiring is complete the uh, two wago connectors one for live one for neutral splitting the live between the uh, dc power supply and the ssr so it goes through the ssr uh, through into this red wire down into the uh, timer element here and also to the indicator lamp uh, and then it goes up through another wago connector because that's where the uh, the temperature module was they connect together goes up through the top element along down a wire at the back along the bottom element and then this effectively is our neutral going back to the neutral wago block here as well uh, i cut the uh, earth off this little uh, crimp here because it was all a bit not well connected i didn't think and i've ended up uh, putting the earth straight to the case bolted through and then this other wire goes to earth the dc power supply even though this case is also earthed i've just doubled up and made sure i've got plenty of earth so uh, hopefully this should be safe now it's worth mentioning of course that if you're not happy uh, messing around with 240 volt or mains voltage well don't attempt it don't take this as uh, the approved way of doing it so back round at the front of the oven i now need to put the screen in this space uh, these wires at the moment are just poking through here out of the way really um they are the solid state relay uh, wires and the five volts and ground for the uh, tiny reflow controller so i'm going to take that screen off i'm hoping that the screen can stay on the outside of the case and the rest of it can go on the inside but we'll see if that works so this little 3d printed spacer gives me the holes i need to drill all four of those and also the space here at the top in this cutout uh, where i'll need to cut out the actual case of the oven uh, to get the uh, i squared c screen 
connectors through so uh, vcc ground sda and scl so i'm just going to get a marker and mark this up so there we have it four marks they don't look terribly even but hopefully they are two mil holes are required but i guess i'll put some slightly bigger ones in there and then this section up here that needs to be sort of gouged out i suspect i'll use my sort of dremel type tool there so there's my oled in the front of the oven and it is connecting to the tiny reflow controller behind that panel uh, hopefully connecting well enough so that that screen actually works but i've just noticed of course that the usb connector for the tiny reflow controller is here and that's behind this panel so i can't get a usb cable in uh, but there is an isp header here and uh, so i could provide the dc voltage there across the vcc and the ground but i've just remembered i think that this is a 3.3 volt module and i've bought a 5 volt power supply so i'm going to need to probably think about that i probably need to drop that 5 volts down to 3.3 before i attach it to the vcc and the ground pins here on the isp header so it was a quick and dirty fix i have well eight of these these are the ams 111111117s uh 3.3 volt versions that just have the uh, linear regulator on there and uh, on the back a couple of capacitors and an led in its current limiting resistor so one of these should knock down my 5 volts to the 3.3 volts that i now need so there we are then my little ams 1111117 module uh stepping down 5 volts to 3.3 volts because i ordered the wrong thing uh isolated in some heat shrink yeah so that should do what i need it to do right so i think i'm about there now i've got five volts down to 3.3 volts uh connected to the isp header through this jst connector uh the point being i might need to uh, disconnect this and take it away from the unit so uh that's what i've done i've made sure the red goes to red and the brown in this case goes to black and they connect to the isp header now i bought these connectors because i want to put them on the two tactile switches here so that i can put external switches on the actual oven case so i may as well while i'm doing this uh, tack some more of these connectors onto those tactile switches so there we go the tiny reflow controllers back in the side of the oven or the front i should say with those two connectors on and this one for power now what i've realized however looking when i was checking all the wiring is i've wired up this ams 11117 incorrectly um i've connected the ground to the middle pin can we see that and that is the out pin not the ground pin so good job i was checking my working before i turned anything on not enough hands i'm afraid to turn this on on camera but we can see led down there five volts led on here 3.3 volts and round the front the oled is on with an error it says tc error thermocouple error well that's correct i haven't got one attached so as you can see this is a two-tone screen the top section is yellow and the bottom section is blue you can see that it's going to have a graph when i actually do a reflow here presumably showing me the temperature as well uh, and some other information in the top lf stands for lead free that's the profile but uh, i need to use leaded and to be able to do that i need to get the buttons in the case and i'm thinking one down here one down there to be honest so there we go then two holes in the front of the oven didn't bother taking the oled out um, and two buttons ready to go in okay so there are my two buttons this one should change the profile perhaps it won't do anything because it's in error mode let's connect a thermocouple so i've taken the thermocouple from the original rocket scream setup here 
And uh, yeah, we're now ready. 12.4 degrees here in the solar shed. Almost done. I just need to poke this uh, thermocouple through the case somewhere. Yeah, I'm not sure where yet. So the thermocouple is on the inside of the oven now and the wiring is pretty much done. We're ready to go. Uh, I've added, well, a couple of green wires here. These are additional thermocouples. I thought it would be interesting when I do my first dry run to uh, check the temperature here at the back of the actual uh, controller here uh, because, of course, this cavity might get warm. And I've put the second one underneath the solid state relay uh, jammed it in that space there to see how warm that gets so yeah let's put the case back on to give it a real test and then uh, I'll use this uh, temperature thermometer k-type thermocouple uh, with two inputs which are reading slightly different at the moment and we'll see how warm it gets in that cavity right well we'll see how well this works I will enable the safety timer and press go. The uh, neon is lighting up and uh, inside the oven can't quite see it glowing yet. Well the temperature is rising 20 degrees in there so we're starting to warm up and we can see the temperature there of the a solid state relay that one is So there we are, the process has finished on this lead-free profile. That's as hot as this oven has ever gone. And the uh, temperature for the solid-state relay... Uh, no, sorry, that's the rocket scream, the 24.7 degrees there. And the other one, there we go. So it got up to 32 degrees, did the solid-state relay. But I think that's perfectly acceptable. So my tiny little toaster oven has had a pretty sizable upgrade, I think. Uh, the original control method, well, it worked and it worked really well, but it was never going to be a permanent solution, was it? I mean, even this wire's just popped off again. Now, uh, the tiny reflow control is a really neat little unit and being able to build everything inside this cavity in the oven is brilliant for me here in the solar shed because this oven takes up no additional space than the actual oven itself after all my improvements. Uh, the only thing now is that knob's a bit out of place, isn't it? And uh, that's okay because I've already 3D printed a replacement, which I'll pop on now. If you've managed to persevere and get to this point in the video, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.